Welcome to Keep Your Hands in Your Skirt podcast with your host, Sabrina Brightstar. Are you a woman who manages her own set point? Use the universal laws of the universe to raise your vibration. Be a woman who can receive more pleasure, more fun, and more joy. Together, let's claim our infinite worth. Keep Your Hands in Your Skirt is a fun way to remind yourself to mind your own business, zero in on you and your desires, say goodbye to judgments and people-pleasing. Join Sabrina and be a woman who can receive, create, and actualize everything you desire. Hello and welcome. Keep your hand in your skirt. My name is Sabrina. I am your host, Keep Your Hand in Your Skirt podcast. Today's topic is about manifesting, another great tool and tip to help you actualize, manifest your heart's desires. Do you have a list of what you would like to actualize, manifest? And what do you think is the number one tool that will assist you so you can take your things from the vortex, as Abraham would say, every Every time we have an experience of what we don't want, we put something in our vortex of what we do want. They, there may be things in there, there may be conditions in there, there may be emotions in our vortex. So how do you get the stuff that you've accumulated over multiple years, how do you get this stuff out of the vortex and into your reality? What is your secret sauce? What is your number one tool or tip to help you actualize your desires? So I've been asking different people, like, what is, what do you believe the number one tool is, the secret, the, your secret sauce for manifestation? And I had a friend say a couple amazing things and her insight was so fantastic that I just had 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 to share it with you because it, it has me very excited. So she was sharing, she believes the number one tip for manifesting is not to be attached, to have no attachment to if you man manifest it, if it actually shows up. So you have a desire, maybe it's that $100,000 luxury car we talked about last time, maybe it's the house, maybe it's the relationship, maybe it's the vacation, right? So you have this desire and then you don't have an attachment to it. And then she went on to say, this is the part that I just thought was brilliant. She said, what if we combined both of our secret sauces, both of our number one tips, and when she said it, I just got covered in goosebumps, right? I just got like chill bumps from the head to toe and something in my body just knew what she was saying is the next layer or the next level or a deeper understanding on how to use the universal laws of attraction to serve you, to support you. And what she said is what happens if your self-esteem was so high that you were able to pair it with non-attachment to if the thing shows up. Like what if those two, right? Like what if those, what if that's the salt and pepper? What if those two flavors, those two components are the secret sauce? And it just felt so right in my body because if you think about it, why do we have an attachment? Why do we get so disappointed when a manifestation doesn't show up? right? What, why is that so heartbreaking? Why is that so disappointing, so frustrating? Well, if we don't really believe we deserve it, we're going to be like hanging on the manifestation, right? We're going to be hanging on so tight because if our self-value, our self-worth, our self-belief in what we believe we deserve to have or we, what we can receive, if our receiving abilities are low, if our self-value is low, we're going to hold on to this. Okay, I heard about law of attraction. I heard if I play these games, I'll be able to manifest this car that I want or I'll be able to manifest you know, being able to pay all these expenses, right? So like, it can be like so significant and you hold on so tight and you, you, you're watching like, okay, I didn't, man I like I'm playing a lottery. I didn't win. Okay. I haven't had a windfall. I, I haven't received an unexpected large sum of money someplace. Like what's wrong? What's wrong? And you are so aware and you're so attached. And is that neediness is that attachment to the thing an indicator 
that your self-value or your self-worth on that topic is low, right? Because when you feel really confident, when you are just really certain, like it'll come, it's so easy to have no attachment. It's so easy to give it space to grow, to come to you, to present itself because you're not, you know, you're not holding on so tight to like, well, how's it going to happen? How's it going to happen? How's it going to happen? Right? You've just got all this space. You've got all this room for possibilities and right. And you're not attached to the, to needing it to happen, to waiting and watching it to happen. And I can tell you personally and you probably can think of many examples in your own personal life, but I've noticed for me in the beginning, when I heard about the universal law of attraction, I had my list and I really wanted to manifest these huge financial goals or not, they weren't even goals. I just wanted to actualize it, right? I just wanted it to appear from my vortex into my bank account. And the, the what I was wanting the, the numbers, the dollars that I was asking for, I did not know how to receive. I did not feel worthy of it. But I thought like law of attractions, a genie, if I write it on the piece of paper, you know, these hundreds and thousands of dollars that I want in my savings account, somehow this magical genie's got to make it happen. And I didn't know that I needed to look at my self-value, my self-worth. Could I be a human that could receive these large sums of money? Did I believe I am worthy? I deserve these large sums of money. Right. And I didn't, but I didn't even know, like I was supposed to be looking at that. And because these like, right, I wanted to become wildly wealthy. Right. I just had these, I went from total poverty consciousness as one of Jehovah's witnesses. I intentionally wanted to not earn, receive a lot of money because I thought, you know, we were as one of Jehovah's witnesses, former, former cult uh, member. I thought that the Bible that Jehovah did not like money, right? The root of all evil, right, is, is money, the love of money. So I had negative association with a lot of money. So when I left that cult and then I started getting to know myself, because I had never gotten to know myself, right? I'd always been a people pleaser for everybody else's daydreams. As I was starting to get to know myself, I realized for myself, I would like to actualize, I would like to have large amounts of money. I wanted to be a wildly wealthy woman, right? Do you remember that author, Wildly Wealthy Women? And so that's what I wanted for myself. And then I hear about the universal law of attraction. And so I like, I was looking like, I would buy the lottery tickets. I was expecting like a huge somebody somewhere, somehow, like I was going to get this huge drop of money into my savings account and it didn't, it didn't show up. So, so I had tried to do the tools, right? I was trying to have the positive statements. I was trying to like be happy, happy. And I talk about that in my last podcast, um, but it didn't come. And so without knowing it, I just kind of gave up on it. Right, but when you put something in your vortex, your multi-dimensional self, your inner being knows what you really, really want, and your inner being is trying to gift it to you in the path of least resistance. And usually, we are the we are the ones that are blocking it from coming. Right, so the the your inner being is trying to let it come into your reality through the path of least resistance. But if you don't believe you deserve it, if you don't believe like you're available for it you aren't going to be able to actualize it. Or if you do temporarily actualize something, you're going to sabotage it. It's going to be a temporary manifestation if you haven't done the work to believe that you're worthy, to believe that you deserve it, to, to know your worth, to know your value. So by ignoring the topic, because I didn't think it was working, I started working on other things following my highest excitement. That's what I really believe in from Bashar. Bashar teaches us, follow your highest excitement to the best of your ability without attachment to outcome, knowing everything is working for you. And so I was following other things, following my highest excitement. And kind of when I turned away from trying to 
manifest money trying to I had such a tight grip on money because I needed it I was very needy I had a lot of financial stress I had a lot of financial concerns because I had budget consciousness I had limitation consciousness but so as I started to shift my focus away from the topic of money I was changing my set point in other areas so even though my financial set point wasn't growing like the other areas, the fact that I was improving my set point on other areas, my financial set point grew some too, right? So it was it it, it doesn't it wasn't equal to some of the other topics in my life, but it was starting to grow as I was growing. I was pulling up my set point in all the areas um, in my life, and. And somehow money just started getting easier and easier and easier and easier. And so I, today I'm a match, right? I'm a match. I believe I'm worth it. I believe I deserve it. I believe it's money is easy. I believe I, I work smart, not hard. I believe I can have an inspired idea and things unfold, right? And, and so the manifestations work differently now for me because I've done the work with my self-esteem set point as well as when my friend was saying, when you just trust yourself, when you've gotten to that place where you just trust yourself, you just know life is happening for you. You just trust that your inner being, the multidimensional universe is working for you. you. You don't hold on tight anymore. So you don't have this neediness to have this, you know, when's it going to happen? When's it going to happen? You can just be detached. You can be neutral. You can just be an observer. So that's the topic for today. What do you think about this topic? Pair non-attachment to the outcome, non-attachment to how fast the manifestation happens with your self-value, your self-esteem. How does that feel for you? Don't those two just feel like the perfect, right? The perfect blend together, non-attachment to the outcome, knowing, trusting that it's coming, as well as trusting yourself, knowing you're worthy, knowing you deserve it, knowing you don't have anything to prove, you are worthy because you are, you are valuable, your self-value, your self-esteem, it's everything. So those are the two pairings. That was so exciting for me. I'm excited to hear what you think is the secret sauce for manifesting. And I would love to get your uh, information on what you have observed and what is working for you and your body. Thanks for listening. Manage your own set point. Use tools to change your vibration. Raise your set point. Thank you for listening to the Keep Your Hands in Your Skirt podcast. Make sure to subscribe and please leave a review. We really appreciate that effort and we'll catch you in the next episode.